Hey guys, Phil here, Doctor of Physical Therapy. Today we will be talking about pain in your Achilles tendon and what to do about it. So the Achilles tendon is a strong tendon that connects your heel bone to your calf. It's actually part of the calf muscle. Sometimes people confuse this with plantar fasciitis, which is more pain at the bottom of your heel versus pain in your tendon, which is above your heel. The plantar fascia, which is the tissue at the bottom of your foot, is connected actually to your calf muscle. But in this video, we'll talk more about pain in your Achilles tendon, which is the upper portion of the heel. First, we have to talk about what is the job of the Achilles tendon. So it's the connection point between your calf muscle to your heel. So it's in charge of pushing off. Basically, whenever you go on your tippy toe, whenever you're walking, jumping, running, every time you're pushing with your feet, that is when an Achilles tendon or your calf has to work hard to absorb shock or push off. Basically, your Achilles tendons will have to work every time you're doing anything with your legs. Think of it like springs. Every time you jump or land, when you're landing, it's absorbing. When you're jumping, you are pushing off. So the most common reason for Achilles tendon pain is what we call tendinopathy. It's also more commonly known as tendonitis, and it's in the world itself. The word itis just refers to inflammation. So whatever you may be doing, is aggravating the tendon. You can think of it as tendon irritation. So any type of tendon irritation, it's usually caused by overloading. Maybe your body's used to playing pickleball for two hours and all of a sudden you go ahead and play a six hour session. That could put you at risk for some tendon irritation. And the tricky part with this diagnosis is what may be too much for you may not be too much for somebody else. Next, we're gonna break down what Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy looks like. And a typical presentation is if you have morning pain. So tendons tend to have like this delayed effect. So after you've done too much, it tends to stay aggravated into the next day or so. So when you wake up in the morning, maybe that first step out of bed is a little achy. And as you warm up, as you walk around, things loosen up, then it starts to feel better. It hurts to do things like going downstairs because you're lowering your whole body weight down onto that foot. It hurts after doing something active because while you're active, there's more blood flow in the area and things tend to feel pretty okay, but maybe afterwards it becomes more puffy and inflamed. It can come and go depending on your level of activity that day. If you've had a long day, maybe it's more achy and bothersome that night. Uh, when it's really irritated, it could look a little bit puffy and swollen. Say you have Achilles tendonitis, how long does it take for it to heal? But the answer is it depends. Unfortunately, Achilles tendonitis is one of the more stubborn injuries that you can get because anytime you're dealing with a lower extremity or lower body injury, such as the foot, ankle, or the Achilles tendon especially, we're constantly on our feet, walking, doing things. So sometimes it can take some time for the tendon to calm down. You really have to find the fine line of not overdoing it because that's just gonna keep the tendon in this inflammatory cycle. So depending on the severity and how sensitive your tendon is, it can take anywhere from three months to up to a year. So to break it down further, there are two types of Achilles tendon injuries. The first one is a mid-portion Achilles tendon injury. What it means is the middle portion of the tendon is the most inflamed. And this is the most common type of Achilles tendonitis. Maybe it's a little bit sensitive to touch when you touch the area. Maybe it's a little bit swollen. The other one's a little bit more tricky. It's called insertional Achilles tendonitis. This one's a little bit more rare and can take a little bit longer for it to heal. You'll tend to have pain more at the bottom portion of the tendon, right where it connects down to your heel bone. And the way you manage this one is just slightly different from how you would manage a mid-portion Achilles tendonitis. So before we talk about the treatment options for Achilles tendinopathy, I first wanna talk about what not to do. A lot of times when people experience any kind of Achilles tendon pain, they wanna stretch it because they think the pain is because of a calf tightness. But in reality, it's an overloaded tissue. So when your tissue is inflamed, you don't want to overstretch it because think of it as like a rubber band. When the rubber band is irritated, it's a little bit swollen, you don't really want to keep on stretching and tugging at that rubber band. Next, you don't want to ignore your symptoms. Some patients often don't really listen to their bodies. They don't really pay attention to what happened, what triggered their symptoms. So a big part of getting better is, is for you to recognize what types of movements trigger your symptoms 
and monitor so that you're not always inflaming the same area over and over again. So listen to your body. So last but not least, a lot of people just do too much soft tissue work in the area, aka things like massage in the area. Because a lot of musculoskeletal injuries, some pressure and some massage in the area can make things feel better, uh, but tendon injuries is actually different. So just going back to the rubber band analogy, if a rubber band is inflamed, you don't want to keep mashing the rubber band. It might just create more inflammation there and delay the healing. So now, how do you actually treat Achilles tendonitis? For tendon injuries, what you want to do is treat the tissue with the issue. So the weird part about it is, is tendons actually like load. So what that means is you actually want to strengthen the tendon to get the tendon stronger so that you can do all the activities that you want to do. And the interesting thing with tendon rehab is if you experience pain, it doesn't mean that you're actually damaging the tendon. As long as it's under a three or four out of 10 on a pain scale. One being very little pain, 10 being so much pain that you need to go to the emergency room. As long as the pain is below a three or four in that mild area, and that's okay. In order for you to get better, you wanna become a master at monitoring your symptoms. You wanna pay attention to how your Achilles tendon feels during the activity, after the activity, and how does it feel in the next 24 to 48 hours. Ideally, you don't want your pain level to shoot past a four out of 10 within any of those time frames. Now that we've set the guidelines, let's jump in and see what we actually wanna do for Achilles tendonitis. So the starting point for rehabbing any kind of Achilles tendon injury is to start with isometrics, meaning you're loading the tendon, but you're not moving through the full range of motion. You're exercising the tendon without much movement. So you wanna start with bilateral heel raise, AKA you're going on your toes with both legs and you're holding it. I recommend starting with 40 to 60 second holds and perform that for three to four rounds every other day. If that feels okay, you can progress to the next level, which is a single leg heel raise isometric, meaning you're doing the same thing, but on one leg. Same thing, 40 to 60 second holds for three to four rounds every other day. Say you've done that for a week or two and things are starting to feel easy, you can progress it to the full heel raise where you're going up and down on your toes. I like to shoot for three sets of 10 to 15 at a two second up and two second down pace and perform that every other day. Say that's also getting easier, the next step would be two up, one down heel raise. So you'll go up on your tippy toes with both legs but you'll come down with one. So two up, one down. And you also wanna be slow with this. So slowly two seconds up, slowly two seconds down. The idea is that that slow lowering down with one leg will really start to strengthen that tendon. Again, same thing, three sets of 10 to 15 every other day. After that, you can start doing some single leg heel raises. So basically you're standing on one leg, you're going up on your toes and coming down. Two seconds up, two seconds down, three sets of 10 and 15 every other day. If you wanna spice things up even more, you can start doing what's called a deficit heel raise, aka you are standing at the edge of a step or a curb or something like that. So you're gonna go up on your toes, you're actually gonna let your heels come down, and then you're gonna go all the way back up. You can start with both legs, and if that feels okay, you can progress it to a single leg deficit heel raise. The only caveat is if you're dealing with insertional Achilles tendonitis, so you're gonna skip this one altogether because that extra loading at the bottom can actually stress your tendon too much. So I've given you a full heel raise progression. So find the level that works for you and start there and slowly work your way up. So you could even just start with the one exercise and do that consistently for three to four weeks before trying the next level. Once you feel stronger and feel comfortable walking in day-to-day -day life, it doesn't really bother you anymore. You can start incorporating some slight plyometrics. Plyometrics just means you are leaving the ground, you're producing force at a rapid pace. So something like a jump. Keep in mind though, you wanna be smart about this, right? If previous to this injury, you weren't really doing a lot of jumping, then you probably wanna skip this part of the rehab program. But if you were pretty athletic and jumping before, then you can incorporate some plyometric work just to further strengthen that tendon. So you wanna start with some gentle double leg hops and you can time it for like 20 seconds, rest for a minute or two and do it again and slowly progress from there. This is just a good way to start strengthening the tendon and getting the tendon ready for some type of more active things. And since plyometrics were leaving the ground is more taxing on the tendons, you don't wanna do it every day or every other day. A good place to start is doing it twice a week. 
spaced out. And once double leg hops feel easy, you can even try some single leg hops. And remember, everybody's different and everybody's timelines are gonna be different. It's always more smart to progress slowly than to do too much too soon, because if you do too much too soon, you can keep things aggravated. The biggest thing is monitoring your symptoms, right? Monitor how you're feeling, how you're feeling after, then you can adjust the level of activity accordingly. Uh, say you've done the two up, one down heel raise, and then the next day it starts to be more aggravated, maybe take a day off, maybe go back down the level to the normal heel raises. So be smart about it. Hope you learned something from this video. Take care.